can you get benefits if you're homeless? The ones I love are the get a job, Bob. They walk past, they go, get a job. Okay, go on then. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an educated man. I've got qualifications in electronics, city and guilds. I've got a degree in psychology. Get a job? Okay. How am I supposed to do that then? Um, I can't, do you know something? I can't even get a bank account. <laughs> the, 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 the converting me over from ESA to universal credit and I haven't had any benefits for a while because they can burn it across but they'll only pay universal credit into a bank account if, right, it's the only place they'll pay it into now, when you're homeless try getting a bank account you need to be residential for three months minimum. For 90 days. So, when I finally find somewhere to live, and I get housing benefit, they can't pay it, because it's now part of universal credit, because I haven't got a bank account. Excuse me. <coughs> because I've been residential for three months. The problem with homelessness is the system is geared up to save money. It's not geared up to help people. We're stuck here. We're trapped in the cycle. My office did a lot of work uh, for a lot of homeless people, helping them get uh, accommodation. The, one of the reasons they come, people who are homeless come down to a seaside town is one, the weather's a bit better, but two, there's a lot of B&B accommodation. And so I would work very closely with the council, helping people who are homeless get into bed and breakfast accommodation. I work closely with a lot of homeless people, helping them get the various benefits, like what was DLA is now PIP, you know, all these different benefits out there. So it is possible. And a lot of uh, uh, homeless people are allowed and entitled, perfectly entitled to, to get benefits. Sometimes obviously need a little bit of guidance and support for that. What would you say to people who think the homeless have antisocial problems, such as drink and drugs? Also, there is the element of the drug trade. Um, Brighton is known to have uh, considerably uh, quite a drug problem, and um, obviously this is involved with uh, the rough sleeper problem as well. I mean, the, the, the two do seem to go together to quite a certain extent. If I see people on the streets that are homeless, I would give them money. But a lot of people think that people giving homeless people money, go and buy drugs, drink. No, I don't drink. I've never taken drugs. I'm like my dad, you know. So not a lot of people are drink and drugs. We're, some of us are drug free, you know, drink free, you know. The only drink I drink is coffee. There's far more of an understanding, uh, I think, today of people who are homeless than there were 20, 30 years ago. Uh, I've always been struck uh, by how many youngsters, teenagers, kids at school, really have a sense about how awful it must be to be homeless, have a sense that people can be homeless. That's something that's a real change from when I was young. Well, I, say, I, I, be, I was homeless for like two years. Um, uh, street almost for two years and I, I basically gave up on life uh, for, for the first part of it I, I did try and seek help I tried going to places you know and after getting knocked back after knocked back saying you're not disabled you're not this you're not that you're not the other I just gave up and if it wasn't for, for Kathy and people like Kathy total strangers that could see I needed help and pick and pick me up I'd still be I'd still be there now you know but what you know if the government doesn't doesn't want to help and Tom, Dick and Harry think oh he's homeless, he's on drugs, he's on drink yeah, yeah. and they don't want to help how can you get off the streets? 
Do you know what I mean? People don't understand, but once you're there, it's, it's, it's really hard to get back up again. You know? And if nobody's going to trust you, you know, how can you, you know, how can you pick yourself up? You know, so. Uh, again, it's why quite a lot of homeless people come down here. I, we've got a lot of B&Bs, like any seaside town, um, uh, uh, which means that the council often will put people who are homeless into bed and breakfast, However, this is not a black and white issue because the challenge I then have, and I know this because I work with a lot of people who are homeless, is sometimes if Sandy have been on the street for a while, you, you become desocialized, which sounds a terrible management speak word, but what it basically means is that in, in a number of instances, when we would get someone into a, a B and B, within three days they were having rows with the, the other tenants, having rows the landlord, and they were thrown out. You get them into another BNP, they're thrown out, and it, it, so do you see what I mean? It's not black or white. I think it's an incredibly important issue, and it's an, an issue in a civilised society we need to face up to and deal with. But anyone over on the far left who says there's a money tree and it's a dead easy issue, they're talking cobblers. And anyone on the far right who says they're the poor and they deserve to be there, they're talking cobblers as well. It's a complicated issue, and the dignified way to deal with it, in my judgment, is to help people try and get into accommodation and then most importantly try and deal with the issues. It's a mental health problem, what can we do to try and alleviate the mental health problem? If it's something where they've got a job that make a difference, how can we support them into a job? I'm a politician who loathes with their passion sticking plaster politics. I can't be done with it. What I came into politics to do is to make a real difference that for good for people's lives and I bring that same approach to people who sadly are homeless.